Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with another Kamihimi Project video. Now, I didn't realize that I didn't do an event event video on this, so sorry, it took me a little bit longer than normal. But um, there's still plenty of time on this event anyway, so there's that. These events tend to last like two weeks. But there are some things I wanted to go over with this event, so definitely had to put a video out. A few things I also, I'm kind of glad I didn't do this video just yet on is that I found out a few things that's going to be happening with um our side. One thing is that they're going to apparently give a compensation. It's mainly geared towards the whole um the whole Watto thing, but there's a few other things they're just going to do it for. But at some point they are going to give. 9,000 magic jewels over the course of nine days, if I read that message correctly. So that said, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen eventually, and that means you're definitely going to want to get those jewels. I don't know if it's going to be a login bonus. I don't know if it's something that they're going to send every day. Who knows? Just look forward to that. So, it seems like they're trying to compensate a little bit for a lot of the recent screw-ups and stuff like that. So, that's something to look forward to. Also, if you haven't noticed, there's free pools every single day. If you check your, um, if you check the gotcha list. It also gives you those Nikkei medals, so I suggest you do that, because that's the only way to get the Nikkei medals for free. So, definitely do that. It's a single pool every day, though, so... I can't expect too much from it. I haven't gotten too much from it myself, but there you go. But, um, anyways, this event, it's an advent event. That means you're on your own. It is fire-based, so water is going to have the advantage. My personal opinion, unless you have a lot of the add-ons that can, like, final break, or you're loaded with a bunch of, like, gotcha add-ons or something like that, you are probably going to want this add-on. Even if you don't main slaughter, so keep that in mind. Also, for those that are like early in the game trying to build up their, their grids and all that, not just the Adolin, but one of the weapons is very good. I don't know how well the other weapon is though. So we'll get into that when we get down to the um to the SSR stuff and everything. But first and form foremost, since it's an advent, you're on your own, no help. It's the usual stuff you have to do where you get the um the event materials and you trade for all that stuff so you do the event you get materials you can trade for it like the SSR weapon the add-ons and stuff like that primary thing to do is go after the gotcha tickets I cannot stress that enough go after the gotcha tickets get your free pools go after magic jewels get your free pools go after the books because you're going to need a lot of those you're really going to go through books trust me when I say that Another reminder about the books is the fact that you need them to break limit your Kamihime. There is a mechanic later on that I've mentioned previously in a few videos. It was rumored before, but it's now officially been confirmed. And I mentioned it in a previous video that it is confirmed. It is called Magic Value. It increases based on the Kamihime levels. The higher the rarity, the more the increase. Awakening also increases this too. So if you get an Awakened Kamihime, they're going to give the most point increase to that system. It will permanently increase your final damage up to 5% total per element. You only get that by leveling your Kamihime. They need books. A lot of other things in the game need books. You're going to need a lot of these books. Grind out these books. Trust me. I'm sitting with over 400 Kami he made that I'd have to level up in order to get ready for that magic value system, and it may not even max it all out. So, again, grind the books. But, um, definitely get the books, the gotcha tickets, get the SSR Adolin and the SSR weapons if you can. Especially the Adolin. The Adolin is very good, even for sub slots. And if you don't keep her, you can still get her for orbs. The weapons, you can still get. SSR Weapon Father from other stuff if you don't plan on using these, but it's still easier to get it from here than the other stuff because it's guaranteed. Plus drop rate if you get lucky. So, there you go. 
The um the SR weapons for that matter can also be used for fodder as well. I keep saying to like not worry about them too much, but that's the thing. They are like a last priority. But if you do want more fodder, there you go. Never really go after the elixirs or the um the seeds because you never really need those. They will fill up naturally. Unless you are very hardcore grinding, they will fill up naturally. And last but not least, too, of course, if you need them, then maybe you can sip and get the soul points. There are more souls on the way for Japanese side. I don't know how how they'll be. I don't know what they'll cost, but we will need more soul points, so make sure you have a decent supply of those just in case. My guess is they're going to be fifth tier, though. But that's just my guess. I'm going off of a few educated things I've noticed about the game where it's like 10 souls per tier and all that, but definitely more souls. So you may want to make sure you have a, a decent amount of soul points stored up. I would say just to be safe for like maybe two or 3,000. But again, I don't know for sure. And if it ends up being a lot more than that, then well, you're definitely going to have to grind. But, um... Basically, you do want to make sure that you have soul points for when that happens eventually, because it's going to be a year after Japanese SAG gets it, but still, we got plenty of time to prepare, why not? Also, the green cores, you do need those, but not as much, but still get them anyway, if you can. That's also something I put as a low priority, they say high on here, but I would rank it more as a low priority. There isn't too much to use those green cores, so there you go. Now, going with the enemies, first and foremost, it says there is a heroic for this. I don't think that's the case, because I haven't seen heroic info on here. So, don't be confused, on screen is just something they have for like, all the different advents after heroic appeared, but if there was a heroic, you'd still need rank 100 to face it anyways. Ragnarok Plus though, it's definitely the, the grind point you need to be at, so make sure you're at least rank 70. It's definitely something that will get you a lot more progress towards the event. Speaking of which, regardless of difficulty, there are four things you really have to pay attention to. The word of the day for this one is buffs. Because there are three specific types of buffing methods this boss has. Along with something that will put defense down on you at the start of the fight, so pay attention to that. And it's long too, even on the weakest difficulty, it's a long turn time. So you definitely want to get rid of that defense down if you can, so you're not taking that much damage. And then on top of that too, it is also going to put like um, damage increases on itself too over time. It starts off with um. Basically just a triple attack, a guaranteed triple attack with just like 25% or less HP. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, the thing with uh, the higher difficulties is that it will eventually change starting with ultimate. Like every fifth turn it's going to do the same, it's going to like do the same type of thing. Immediately normal attack, but instead it's going to really spike its normal attack damage for six turns. If this is timed wrong, you can start taking a lot of normal attack damage, so be very, very careful of that. Because just looking at all the stuff, you can sip and see it's have, having a triple attack, a huge boost in normal attack damage, your defense down can be there, and if it does any sort of burst where it's at full orbs, it can give itself a, a um, fire attack increase, which is even more damage it can do to you. So be careful with that. But the main gimmick of the fight is just to pay attention to the buffs it has and try to remove them if you can. Get rid of that defense down if you can. And definitely, definitely be careful of its normal attacks. Whenever it, whenever the turn hits the fifth turn, or whenever its HP gets, gets to one fourth of it or, or less. So that's the big thing you have to pay attention to. But the usual stats apply basically. It's got 600,000 HP on Expert. Ultimate's got 1,500,000. Uh, 
three million on Ragnarok and twelve million on Ragnarok Plus. And of course, with Ragnarok Plus, the other enemies also have their own special gimmicks too, which I'm going to quickly go over. The first one increases its own combo rate, and then it randomly attacks four times when its burst goes off. So when it's got full orbs, it'll do that. The second one, if you have a defense down, and that's from its burst, if there's anybody that has a defense down, then it ups its fire damage. So, pay close attention to that. The third one, there's no special action, but you do have to be careful of the fact that it will start dealing attack down when its HP is at half or lower, along with the AoE nuke. It will always AoE nuke, but when its HP is below ha half, it will start putting attack down on you too. Other than that, it's pretty much the same stuff for the previous thing. The only difference is the fact that the boss will now have a 9 turn defense down, so considering that Ragnarok usually doesn't last that long once you, you've leveled up, it can last the entire fight. So, remember that. But again, the main thing is trying to keep its attack, attack buffs and all that off itself, so buffs are the key to not worry about it. And then they don't even give a strategy here too, that's why I get my own strategy. I've already done it a few times. Even though I can just completely blast through it, but it's still a typical strategy. Buffs, remove them. Debuffs, remove them. That's all you really need to do. Now, as for your rewards. The Idolin herself, very good base attack, but 2000 plus seems to be the standard. Pretty good HP. Here's where things get very interesting. The reason why you're going to keep her regardless increases the combo rate of all allies. Combo buffs are very, very good, especially since we're getting closer and closer to the point where we can get grindable tech weapons. That means normal attacks are going to get more of a focus. Now, I would say that you don't want to neglect burst or ability damage entirely when that happens. But at the same time, if you have the team or the grid for it, you might as well. If your normal attacks are dealing, I would say, roughly 900,000 per hit, then that's where that's the point where you really don't need to worry about anything else but normal attacks. I would even say maybe 700,000 per hit, assuming you can get all your hits off, like nothing but triple attacks. This can help towards that. So... Combo rate is always highly valued, especially now that technical weapons are in the game, and we're going to get a grindable source of them later too. They'll be small, but they're still they're still going to help your normal attacks. Even further is if you sit her in your main slot, because um, I would say this: if you are not using an Adolin that gives you a hundred percent elemental boost or higher, or of course a catastrophe Adolin, which is the best ones. If you're not using them, you may want to consider using her. Even if you have a Guardian, you may want to still consider using her. Because the whole thing is that she's giving elemental attack, plus she's upping your triple attack. That is very, very highly valued. Now, if you do need more HP and all that too, you're probably going to want the um, Fire Guardian. But if you know you're fine on HP, you probably... There's a good chance that she would help you out more, because you're comboing a lot more. That will let you get more damage, it will let you get more bursts, and it will snowball into better and better things. So, it all depends on your setup. Test it out, but either way, she's going to be in your sub slots Until you get, like, maybe gotcha dawns and all that. She'll be in your sub slots at the very least. Now, for the weapon. Those of you that are still using... The um, Catastrophe weapons from Ultimate Raids, you're going to want this weapon. Because of the fact that it is going to give Large Assault, Small Defender, and Small Double Attack. Now, Double Attack isn't that good, but considering that the Ultimate Catastrophe Raids only give, only give the um, Assault and Defender, this is still technically better. Because the stats can rival it on top of giving 3 effects instead of 2. So, you will want this axe, if you're doing that. If you're using Guardian Raid weapons, you can forget this, because the Guardian Raid weapons are better, in my opinion, because the staff alone gives you Assault, Defender, and Ascension, which is more healing. So, it's better for surviving. 
along with still giving you a pretty good damage boost. This is a weapon I'm not too sure about, though. This one is Large Rebellion Small Defender. It cannot final break. The deal with Rebellion is the fact that it is a multiplier increase as your HP drops. It does not stack with Pride. It is its own multiplier. So, Pride and Rebellion are two separate multipliers. The problem with this is that, that it can't final break. That's why I don't know if it's going to be good or not. You may or may not want to hold on to this weapon, especially since it's a large rebellion. The last time we had a weapon like this, it was small, and it was on wind. The only other rebellion weapons are in the gacha. So, me personally, I will get this, and I will hold on to it, but I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. I suggest everybody else does the same. So, if you ask me, you, ha you should be getting all three SSR weapons. And even if you don't want to keep, I mean, not SSR weapons, all three SSR items. And even if you don't want to keep them, you still should get them anyway because you have more fodder or add Doan orbs or whatever. As for the SSR stuff, it's the standard crap at this point. We've long hit a point where we don't need to chase SSR weapons at all. You get the SSR and go from there. So SR is fodder to a T. Get it if you need more fodder, but that, otherwise, ignore it. As for the event missions, it is the same stuff as before. This never changes. It doesn't matter what element it is. It doesn't matter what element you use. The only thing that matters is the rarity of the Kamihime you use. Which means you have to use SR Kamihime or weaker for Expert and Ultimate Raid. For Ragnarok, they have to be our rarity. Nothing, nothing higher. And for Ragnarok Plus, you just have to clear it without an elixir. You do that, you get your extra stuff, including a Dragonic Eye Shard. Now, in the case of the um, the Rarity Missions 2, I have to remind some people because um, it it does seem a little bit confusing at first, but that that's just how the game is. It says SR or lower. That includes your sub slots. You can't have SSR Kamihime in your sub slots and think you would get away with it. it Want you to have SR or lower for all Kamihime slots. Same thing for the R rarity. The other thing, does not matter what soul you use. They are not specific to these missions. If you want soul specific missions, that's in guild order. It doesn't count in this one. So, when it comes to the rarity based missions, because they're also in guild order too, all your Kamihime have to meet that requirement. And it's the same case for um for the battlefield of weapons for anybody that's capable of doing that because i i've heard that they changed the requirements for that so if that's the case then you're going to need to be a higher um rank in order to unlock it i think it's like rank 120 now maybe i'm not sure just yet but um you will need to be a a high enough rank to do battlefield of weapons but it has the same sort of like structure like these missions too so Keep that in mind. Like, if you go into a glaive fight, you get more stuff you use Kamihime that like glaives. Even sub slots. So, there's that. And that also applies to your, um, your souls, too. So, make sure your soul likes glaives or something like that, too. But these rarity missions, everybody has to speed at, except for your soul. Now, last thing I do want to, um, mention is that, uh, there has been a few things that um, got added to the Jap Japanese side that I did want to go over a little bit. But it's not going to be like a full-blown sneak peek thing. But there's something called EX Battle that they added. It's like heroic, basically. But you get magic jewels for this and not some I-1 metal. So you may want to try them when it comes out. There's only even three, though. So, there's that. Another thing that that's... um. I've mentioned was a magic value system. Of course, level up all your Kamihime, you get more magic value out of that. A big, big one that's going to be on the way pretty soon, too. It's going to be in like a, a month and a half. The Machine Beast Raids. They are known as the Malicious Raids for short. 
they are going to be harder than your Guardian Plus raids. And on top of that, they have a lot of mechanics that you will need to pay attention to. I will be doing videos on this as they come out. It's not going to be something I'm going to wait for all six to come out and do it because each one has its own separate way of fighting it. So I'm going to I'm going to be doing guide videos on each one and breaking down what you need to do for each part. But there are some mechanics that will go through all of them. And those mechanics are the fact that you will have to pay attention to the turn count because that's going to affect the enemy AI. You will have to make sure you can do a lot of damage because one of the conditions you have to meet for each of raid is definitely 50 million or more damage dealt at certain points. And then on top of that too is the fact that they all have like almost a billion HP. It's the most HP we've seen on enemies yet. At least out of the ones that we're meant to kill. So there's that. But these are going to give you ultimate limit break materials. And they also give you weapons that can ultimate limit break. I mentioned the grindable tech weapons. This is where you get them from. So prepare yourself for these raids eventually because it ain't, it isn't too far off. And speaking of um, raids, Guardian Plus raids should be getting nerfed pretty soon too. I just don't remember when it is, but they will be getting nerfed. Hyperion will be getting nerfed. Atlas will be getting nerfed. Drop changes are going to happen where you get more drops from um, raids and stuff. They're going to change how how many materials you need for your um your S class souls or the fourth tier souls. That's something else. This is a lot of stuff that's going to be on the way pretty soon, within the next month or two. So that said, pay close attention to that. Now, when it comes to the EX boss, that's something that's a year from now. When it comes to the um the magic value system or the leveling mechanic, that's a year from now. So you have time to prepare for those, but honestly, it's not that hard. Really, just make sure you got leveling materials and the EX boss is just glorified heroic. But, um, the raids I mentioned and the raid changes, definitely, definitely prepare yourself for those. They're not going to be easy. I will try to solo the dark one, because I always try to solo all the dark content. I will try to solo that when it comes out, but it's going to be the last one to come out, so it's going to be a while. But they're going in the order of fire, then wind, and I think it's going to, um to water next after that so it's going to be kind of out of order of their numbers but that's how it is but anyways that's all for this more of this will come soon don't expect an event video from me because it's not it doesn't have a heroic so i'm not really going to show it off i blow through it too easily but um anyways that's all for this and expect Probably a few raid attempts on these too, because the, the uh, malicious raid you can go off element. It's just a lot harder to do so. You don't get too much of a damage dealt penalty compared to Guardian Plus, but it will make your day a lot harder. So whether I do on element or off element, I might be attempting every single Guardian. I mean, not Guardian. Every single um malicious raid as they come out, but. Again, like I said, I want to do videos on each one because each one has its own, it has its own individual mechanics on top of the overarching ones. Because the overarching ones is turn-based, for the most part. And then there's debuffs and all sorts of other stuff, so keep that in mind. But, um, anyways, that's all for this. More will come soon, and take care.